Aditya Kodumapani. Uh, I'm working with Team Indus as a uh, systems engineer. Uh, and uh, so we're basically building India's first private uh, mission to the moon. Uh, so <coughs> while we may be literally going to the moon and, and, and that's, that's something that's technologically possible as of today, it's only not happened in the private sphere, but uh, every challenge that we face every day, uh, there's a new problem that's uh, been solved by other people, but the information is not available in, in uh, public, uh, public archives. Uh, you'll have to figure that problem out, so break that down into a physics problem, a chemistry problem, and, and solve that. And every time we solve that, we feel uh, we're helping architect uh, something, something that's new in India, uh, one moonshot at a time. And, and that, that's basically the term that we give every one of our, our aspirations uh, as one moonshot at a time. Uh, so there's there's a lot of uh, questioning that happens both both within our own team, each each of our engineers, each of the scientists who work with us, uh, and even when we speak to the public as to why would you want to go to the moon, and uh, it's it's sort of a question that that I ask back, asking that if you had a dream and you wanted to chase it, uh, and and you were you were given the freedom to go fly, not worry about what could pull you back, uh, would you do it? And uh, we at Team Indus are, are actually doing that. Uh, we, we dare to dream that could we do something that, uh, that's, that's uh, sort of like what Kennedy said uh, in the Apollo days, as in uh, uh, we shall go to the moon and do the, all, do, do the other things, uh, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. But that's, that's exactly the dream. Nobody dreams something that's easy. Somebody dreams something that's not accessible today. Uh, something that's beyond their reach, but that, that's what we're trying to do. And uh, we're trying to do this to, to uh, do this to make our nation proud because uh, as, as a private mission, it's, it's not something that you see very easily that in India you get something that is audacious, somebody who's taking a lot of risk uh, for something that does not look like a very good near-time return. Uh, but but that's, that's how it started. That's, it started with a dream and now we're building building the rest of the structure around that. Uh, I'll, I'll take you through through uh, Team Indus's journey uh, and a little bit of my personal journey as well through this. Uh, so th this is where it started. So a lot of science fiction novels uh, reading, I think, uh, from the age of 10. Uh, Arthur C. Clarke, one of my favorite authors, mainly because he, the expanse of what he, what he used to write about uh, worlds where uh, you had colonies on Titan, you had uh, airships on Venus, you had the space habitats uh, revolving around the Earth. Uh, those, those, sort, those, the sort of visions that he gave uh, sort of both inspired me, uplifted me, but also gave me a little bit of sorrow, thinking that uh, I look up there and I don't find that right now. Uh, there's no ticket that I can go to uh, pick up and go to Mars right now. Uh, but of course, you have a lot of people who are trying to do that, but it's not yet happened. And uh, that, that's when I, I came back to the earth and uh, this, this, uh, this gentleman, Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam, he's my real life inspiration. Uh, he was there at a time in India when we didn't have a viable space program, we didn't have uh, something that we could call a, a defense program as well. So he's, he's also known as the missile man, but uh, not many know that he was the one who helped kickstart in the Indian government's first attempt to get to the moon. He he suggested, why not we, we do something like the Chandrayaan mission? Uh, why not we put an impactor on the spacecraft and let that drop to the moon so that we have planted the Indian flag on the moon? So he's, uh, he's been an inspiration both for me and uh, a lot of people in my team. Uh, I, I, I had the fortune of meeting him when I think I was, I was 14 in school. A uh, huge impression on me and, and I've, I've basically taken up aerospace engineering uh, as, as, as my career after meeting him. Uh, what, what you see here is, is the Chandrayaan-1 uh, spacecraft. This was four days before it got integrated with the launch vehicle. Uh, 2008, 2008, I think September 2008, when uh, it launched from, from India, went to the, went to the moon and uh, of course made those, those discoveries that confirmed that there is water on the poles of, of the something moon. Something that's, that's pushed uh, private entities to start looking at space exploration very, very seriously because not, not before long it's, it's going to be commercially viable and it's going to be competition before you can even get there. So 
uh, we, we need to be ready to see and recognize that particular demand. So let me introduce the Google Lunar X Prize and uh, expand a little bit on that. Which uh, So this, this was a global competition. It was launched in 2007 uh, by the X Prize, X Prize Foundation. Uh, the problem statement basically is a private entity, 90% privately funded. You could get government grants for up to 10% of the total investment. Get to the moon, soft land, as in don't, don't damage it as you go land there. Uh, move across the lunar surface 500 meters at least and send back high definition images and live broadcast back to the earth. So there's there's a lot of the, the technologies that, that has been spelt out in that problem statement that exist as of today, uh, but not in the hands of, of private entities. It's, it's not accessible. Uh, if you were uh, a huge superpower like the United States, you could afford to do these things. But as a private entity, that's where the challenge challenge exists, and that's the reason that the X Prize Foundation wanted to give this private uh, uh, give private enterprises this particular opportunity to try and do that, and thereby reduce the cost of doing this, and hence open up the access to space. Uh, team Indus is one of five uh, still standing teams in this competition. It started off with nearly 30 teams. Uh, it came down to 16 teams, I think, in 2015, and now there are just five teams in the in the competition. And Team Indus is is the only representation from India, uh, and this was actually a surprise to us when we registered for the competition that there's nobody else in India who's doing it. And uh, sort of we were proc procrastinating, as in if somebody else comes up, probably we'd help them. And what do we do? And it was I think uh, six hours before the deadline closed. I think it was 2010, uh, 31st December that. Uh, we ended up registering for the competition, and that's that's been an amazing journey from there. A little bit of numbers and how we're trying to do this thing. So, uh, broke the problem statement into one, we get off the Earth, uh, get into space. Uh, we would need a spacecraft, uh, probably with its own propulsion system that could go all the way to the moon. Uh, it would need, of course, a lot of propellant, and uh, a, a bulk of what we would launch up would, would be just propellant. That would have to be burnt all the way till we touch down on the surface. And once we get to the moon, then, then of course, we put our rover out, deploy the rover, uh, drive it from the Earth, and uh, hopefully claim the prize. A little more in depth. Uh, so we have uh, the Earth here. Uh, we have the moon there. And it's it's roughly four lakh kilometers in between. And uh, there's orbital mechanics which says that you can't go in a straight line. So you need to loop the loop uh, multiple times and get there so that you save the propellant and hence launch uh, a lesser mass on the on the rocket and in in space it basically says that uh, a gram of uh, of launch mass saved is worth its uh, value in gold so uh, and and that's that's actually all, also our costing model uh, so the the launch vehicle leaves us in in the first orbit what we call g1 so that gets us as far as 70000 kilometers from the surface uh, we do a small test burn raise the orbit by another 10000 once that returns back, and this, this orbit takes like 28 hours for us to get back to this point, uh, we perform a maneuver, what we call as the translunar injection. That gets us slingshotted all the way to the moon. Uh, that's a four and a half day journey. Uh, and we are tracking this from the ground uh, using multiple Earth stations. So one of them is close to Bangalore. This is the Indian Deep Space Network. Uh, and, and, and since the Earth rotates and, and the moon is roughly in the same location, uh, after uh, roughly 12 hours of, of seeing it from Bangalore, we'd have to uh, shift to the JPL station uh, from California. So that that intercepting with the with the moon that occurs when basically California is looking at the moon. Uh, so we get into a weekly uh, weak capture orbit. So basically, weak capture orbit is that uh, once we perform a maneuver here, it's it's just there for a while. And if we were to go another loop, uh, it would just escape from the moon's gravity and then get out uh, and probably come back and hit the earth or just leave the whole earth moon system so it, it's very critical that we re uh, reduce the altitude that we are at uh, so get further and further closer to the moon's gravitational influence uh, once we get close enough uh, we we start our our lunar descent so that's from an altitude of 12 and a half kilometers uh, now this is 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 basically the the most crucial part what what they call at times for mars as seven minutes of terror. So it's it's actually 15 minutes for us. It's a little more prolonged. Uh, we start at uh, 
at an altitude of 12 and a half kilometers as i said in the previous one and the the speed that we're going at is 1.7 kilometers a second so uh, if you were to make any human judgment uh, you would have to do it in less than a second because if if you missed uh, say sending a particular instruction to the computer it would have traveled nearly 2 kilometers away in that one second and there's a time lag as well between the moon and earth so if you were to make a phone call from here over wireless or something uh you would say hi somebody would say hi and you would hear that uh 1.7 into 2 so 3 and a half seconds later you'd get a uh, hello or hi or uh an acknowledgement basically so we can't afford to have that sort of a delay so uh then we thought let's let's build an autonomous system so descent is autonomous from the from the time it starts all the way till it ends and we will never know uh or we we would actually know if something goes wrong because we would stop listening about it but uh we could we cannot affect anything that happens all of it is just like uh, we are a spectator all our work all our work of uh the last 5 to 6 years is just in watching this thing unfold and this this is how a spacecraft looks like uh it's it weighs 600 kilograms when when they load it onto the launch vehicle uh 400 kilograms of just propellant 200 kilograms of actual hardware uh out of which we have 20 kilograms of payload some of it is our rover that we will that will attempt the 500 meter trek the rest of it is something that uh we're doing uh, uh commercial returns with so this is something that can help sustain our business uh the landing site that we've chosen is in the northwestern quadrant of the near side of the moon so whenever we we look at the moon we look at the same side uh and we can always look at our landing site from any point on the earth in in uh, every 12 hours basically we'd we'd be able to see that particular spot all the time so we we have unlimited communications with uh, with that particular location and the the second and third parts of the problem statement is basically going 500 meters and taking the high definition images so this is our rover uh, she's called ika and uh, she's four wheeled all electric solar powered uh has three cameras two of which are on this mast uh, there are stereo pair it sort of gives human vision uh, so the controllers on the ground can basically see what the rover sees uh make judgments of depth uh and and see whether there are hazards in front uh whether you 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 need to negotiate them or go over them uh we the, the sort of wheel designs that we've done over here basically allows us to go up to uh and and that centimeters a second that that's the correct unit so it's 10 centimeters a second that's top speed uh it's the fastest in class for any planetary rover uh and yeah it it can do slopes and and it's really lightweight so we we actually started with a rover that weighed around 15 kilograms and uh, yeah to 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 make it more viable and optimized we had to bring down that mass to 7 that's where it is right now so uh as a private uh enterprise trying to trying to go to the moon uh this this gives us a huge advantage it lets us take what we're doing and and take it to the people uh it helps us inspire educate uh get them aware of of the things that can come out of india and uh, th- this is something that 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 uh we've we've put out both as as a as a campaign and 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 to make this this really really aware that it's not just a moonshot that we are attempting uh we'd like to call it her indian ka moonshot that is you can own it as as much as us if if you're aware of what what it takes to do it and what impact it can have uh so through this we 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 hope to uh inspire people give them an experience that that's that's not really been there in india and and hope to unleash the potential that we have in india uh, especially the next generation so that they can do a lot better than what we've tried to do uh for this we've uh, we've started a few initiatives so they are they are not directly tied to uh just just going to space but it's but it's it touches a lot of uh different places that that we'd really like to see uh development done in so one of them is something that uh, uh it's it's called lap to moon uh it's it's a global competition for people under the age of 25 uh to design and build an experiment that that can help prove that we can have a sustainable life on the moon so uh there's there's always been this this transition period from science fiction to reality that can you really have moon bases how would you do it and and it's 
and it's really about the younger people because they have that innocence and uh, lack of fear. Uh, if they were to try and build an experiment that that could have even one percent chance of success, that is all that we need. We we don't need to really put that to a government agency and tell, uh, can you build me a space habitat? Can you give me uh, healthcare that can work in low gravity? Uh, there's another thing that we've done. What we call is moonshot on wheels. Uh, this is uh, this is a combination of of uh, what we call as inspiration through. Uh, through the things that that we have tried to do and what what other space missions have tried to do, basically reach far, as well as experiential learning. So, uh, this is a bus that would travel across uh, 11 states, nearly uh, more than more than 12,000 kilometers, uh, reach as many schools as it can on the way. So, touch statistically around 36,000 school children, and give them an opportunity to see what where they can be. Uh, when 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 they get to choose their career, so STEM and uh, and, a, and a little bit of learning on on space focused things. Basically, it it helps them expand their horizon. See that if I can study something that is applicable in space, then obviously there are applications on, here on Earth, and that that sort of stretches their perspective and then allows them to see everything in between. Uh, the last initiative is is something that that. Uh, We've, we've tried to put out an invitation to every single Indian uh, to be an equal stakeholder in our success. So uh, if, it's, if it's a successful mission, it's a successful mission for India. Uh, it's a successful private enterprise that is able to work as a business model out of India by doing the things that normally people are, are really scared to do. Uh, who'd, who'd really want to take a risk of putting uh, 70 to 100 million dollars into launching something to the moon which might not come back. but just the just the whole enterprise of going there and developing all those technologies which which have a huge waterfall effect on everything else in society that that's something that we're trying to do and and we'd like uh, as many people to be a stakeholder in that uh, so what what we're giving an opportunity is that people can get their names engraved on a titanium cube that we have uh, we'll mount that on the spacecraft and send it along with the spacecraft to the moon so it remains there for posterity it's a symbol of what uh, a million people want to do uh, together to uh, to take India out. Uh, so that's that's basically what what uh, we hope to to uh, start off. So set set that snowflake into motion and probably unleash all sorts of potential that that's there within the country. Uh, we can reach higher if 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 we dream, uh, if we work upon those dreams, and uh, any anything is possible basically. So. Uh, counting down uh, to India's Apollo moment uh, when we are on the launch pad on 28th December 2017 uh, and, and hope to make everybody proud. Thank you.